What's up guys? It's been a long time, but not long enough. So we're back. <laughs> what are we talking about today? We are talking about GHD everything. Everything <laughs> on the GHD. So what's, what's our goal? Our goal is to show you guys, one, how to use the GHD properly with the uh, different movements and different exercises I have for you guys today so that you guys can utilize that in your gym and in your open gym time and in your own programming. So do you think most people look at this and think, oh, it's just for GHD setups? Correct, I think it's the, probably the most uh, misunderstood and underutilized piece of equipment in every CrossFit gym that has one. Okay, so we're gonna start off doing everything kind of face down. Yeah, we're gonna start with the back side, so posterior chain, that's the big common theme right now for everybody in gyms everywhere is backside muscle groups first, and then we'll flip it over, and then we'll introduce it as a midline core movement. Cool, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited more. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Gonna start with our first movement. I got Jake, he's gonna demonstrate for us a true hip extension. Now, uh, this is definitely confused sometimes with the back extension. So we're gonna talk about one setup and then proper execution of the actual exercise. So Jake's gonna set up the machine. As you can see in the bottom here, it's got little, little tabs on it. He's gonna set it so that for his hip extension, his hips are actually off my little half circle at the end here. So as you can see, the hips are just off the edge there so that we can keep the back flat. So he's obviously got his nice back flat there and we're gonna keep the hips dynamic, meaning we're gonna move just at the hip. So he's gonna cross his arms over his chest and just using his hinge. So he's gonna push his butt up to the ceiling, his nice straight L, you can see that L on the bottom, Winston's even looking his face. And then he's gonna use his glutes and hamstrings to pull up to parallel, squeeze, and then move back down for his next rep. And we're gonna do three slow and controlled because you can do this a multitude of different ways. So one being this type of style where we're working a little bit more slow controlled strength movement. And now I'm gonna have him do three or four really fast dynamic ones to work on hip aggressive speed from the bottom up. And you can see the L still stays in place. There's no rounding in the back and he's working on just getting a nice hinge position on the way down. So go ahead and relax, Jake. That is a true hip extension. Again, covering it Hips off the edge of the pad, back stays flat and in a neutral position the whole time, and we just move at the hips into a hinge in the bottom to make a little L there and come up to parallel to the floor. That is the hip extension. Let's do what is known as a back extension, okay? And this is a true back extension again, and like we talked about, sometimes the back extension and hip extension are mixed up. So for a back extension, you can see we had it set up for the hip. He's gonna actually move it back about three spots for himself because what we want to do is lock the hips now in place so the hips aren't going to move. And you can see this little half circle here. We want the hip at the top peak of it. We could actually move Jake back one more if you could, Jake, uh, just to go back a little further. We'd like to see the hips right on top of our little peak of this half circle so that those are locked in place. That's a little bit better, okay? And he's going to push his feet against the back piece there on that back plate. And now we're going to think about little cocoon position here. So what we're gonna start with is hands across the chest and starting at the neck, he's gonna tuck his chin in and he's gonna think about rounding his back. We're giving up the spine position and he's gonna go down each vertebrae, nice and smooth and slow, round the back till all the way to the bottom of the position. There you go, you can see the rounding and he's gonna come up reverse. So low back's gonna go, then the mid back's gonna straighten out, then the upper back's gonna straighten out and then the neck's gonna do. And let's do one more of these, Jake. So he's gonna tuck in, chin, upper shoulders, mid back, low back, all rounded. And then he's gonna come back up reverse, low back, mid back, shoulders, and chin. And there's our true, true back extension for all you folks out there wondering what the difference is when you see that on your programming, hip versus back extension. So, the granddaddy of them all, the king cobra, as you might say, of the GHD, is the glute ham raise. Uh, very, very tough drill. It is a great strengthening drill for the hamstring and glutes and also for midline and back strengthening as well. So, you can see we had the GHD set up to uh, our last drill, which was the back extension. We're gonna move it back forward again to a little glute ham position. So what we're looking for is for Jake to be able to basically tuck his knees tight to the bottom of this little half circle at the bottom of the plate. Now if the, if the knee is too high up, 
it's actually going to stress your knees a little bit too much than we'd like. So obviously the tighter the bottom, the better. Uh, now you can see Jake's going to start vertical, right? Again, he's going to cross his hands over his chest, okay? Now what I'm looking for is the line from his shoulder down to his knee, right? Through his hip, that nice straight line, to not break, okay? And he's going to release down towards parallel to the floor, keeping that straight line, and he's going to pull himself back up. Very good. Now, as he's doing that, as he's lowering down, you can see his toes are tight to the plate, and then as he lowers to straighten his legs out, his heels drive against the plate to pull back up with his posterior chain. Now, Jake, show a bad rep where the hips stay behind and just the shoulders tuck down. Down, and now the hips shoot back. Boom, and then he comes up. Notice that, right? The hips came back first, and let's do one more, a little bit slower now. So now he comes up, yep. And now notice I no longer have a line from my shoulder hip to knee. Right? I lost that position, so we don't want to break at the hip. Let's do one more, Jake. Down straight, a beautiful rep now. Up, straight line, shoulder, hip, knee. Perfect, good. That is our glute ham raise. Very good strength in the exercise. Now, as long as I have Jake here, let's talk about ways to develop the strength of this. You can do a negative. That's what these little handlebars are on, on the side that I use a lot in classes. So we'll actually, I'm gonna actually have you start at the top, Jake and we'll lower slow. These are for you guys out there that cannot pull yourself back up yet, but can still maintain the straight line down. And you can take the down slow to parallel, and then put your hands on the plate and push yourself back up to restart, right? Or even break it, right? So go down slow again. There's your rep hands, and now you'll just kind of bend your knees to help, yeah, help yourself back up. That is one way to develop strength on the way down for the negative side of it. A way to help out on the way up is to actually band it behind you, which we'll, we don't have a band right now, but to show you guys the band would be around his chest from the back side of the plate and help him up that way. So multitude of ways to build strength for the glute ham raise, but again, we're looking for shoulder, knee, and hip all in one solid line, down to parallel to the floor and back up again. That is the glute ham raise. So now that we've finished with the glute ham raise, another great accessory to the GHD is just doing a basic Sorensen hold. And basically that's the bottom of your glute ham raise where we're at parallel or the bottom of your hip extension position where you're just holding the parallel uh, line to the floor with your glute and hamstrings engaged, heels tight against the pad as best you can. And now you can add weight to it to make it a little bit harder. And then obviously the longer you can hold the better and things like that. So Jake's gonna actually use a, a bar here on his back. He's gonna lower himself down to a parallel position and he's gonna not arch his back so we're gonna draw the rib cage in tight and that line is gonna stay nice and flat and he's gonna engage hamstring glute right everything's nice and straight across as you can see and we can do holds of different levels you can do Tabata holds of 20 and 10 you guys can do longer holds with bigger rests in between to build some some stamina on the back but you'll really start to feel this guy uh, burn in the back side there with this Sorensen hold. Again, flat to the floor. We don't want to break at the hip and you don't want this humongo arch in your back. So this is the Sorensen hold. Nice job, Jake. You looked really good there. That was really hard to hold. <laughs> now let's flip it around here a little bit, Jake. Let's do some abdominals. So we're gonna do the GHD sit-up, which is pretty much what everybody sees with the GHD nowadays, especially in the CrossFit world, is just the GHD sit-up. Uh, so what we're gonna talk about here is how to set up for it. So we want your hips off the back edge or just on the edge of the pad. If it's too high on the peak, it's gonna be way too hard of a sit-up, okay? If it's even past the pad, that's actually illegal and it's gonna be almost impossible to even get your feet in there anyway. So we wanna be able to put the feet in and have your butt just off the edge of the pad, okay? And what we're looking at right now is you can see his knees are bent right now, okay? When he leans back and reaches for the floor and wants to pull himself up, he's gonna shut those knees hard, so push down on them to help pull up and touch the pad at the top. See that? And we're gonna go back again, Jake. Touches the floor, shuts the knees hard, pulls up, touch. And let's do one more. Reach back, touch, and good. That is the GHD sit-up. So we're looking for, again, set-up, hips off the edge of the pad, performing the execution of the, of the movement. Back, up, knees shut tight, touch the pad, into your multiple reps of the GHD sit-up. You have your kid, I have my kid. <laughs> <laughs> The sons. 
Did we show the foot? Yeah, it's the fattest foot. <laughs> Hope you guys really appreciated it. We went over obviously the cool points of performance for GHD sit-ups. I'm sorry, for the GHD machine and how it's a great tool for a posterior chain and for, he dropped his binky. <laughs> it, touched his, it touched my dog's butt. Okay. <laughs> Put it in his right, mouth. Put it in mouth. We're gonna get back to doing one a week. I was obviously traveling. I think the next one we're gonna do is handstand walking yeah, and good. or butterfly pull-ups. We could take a boat. We could boat. We could boat. We could boat. Put it on the story. Put it on your story. Hey, so we appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you guys later. See you guys. Oh, oh. kisses. Kisses. <laughs>